All righty, guys. For the plaintiff, Mr. Hayhurst. For the defense, Carrie is Mr. Peckinpah. We have court. We have witness. Fun with property. Fun with exhibits. Lots of numbers, letters, and numbers. Everything into the chat. All right, um, and we're going to go 175. So starting uh, with examination by myself, Mr. Hayhurst. Everybody ready? Here we go. Now, you are familiar, of course, with the other improvements on the property as a whole. That's right. You can take your seat. And you are familiar with the improvements around the Crossland cabin? That's right. And with those around the Humphreys cabin? I am. Mr. Erickson is the quarter section capable of physical division into three parcels, one of which would have located upon it your cabin and the buildings and having a value of three times each of the other two parcels, exclusive of the value of the improvements on it, one of which parcels would have located upon it the Crossland improvements and the other of which would have located upon it the Humphreys improvements with each of the latter two parcels having an equal value exclusive of the improvements. Outside of the timber, I believe yes. Well, do I gather from that that considering the timber, you could not so divide it? No, I believe, I think it could be physically divided. That's what I am trying. Yes, in my opinion, it can be divided. And when you say that, I suppose you are considering the relative quantity and quality of the land involved? I do and including the timber and all other factors that you would have to consider? That's right. Would you tell us how you think the property could be divided? And I would suggest that in telling us that, perhaps you can more easily mark it upon the map than you can tell us. I think he'd probably have to take his own map that he's marked here. Do you have a map of your own that you have made some divisions on? Yes, I have. I think the court is familiar with this map. We had it up here. Do you have a ruler, Mr. Sousa? It is the one that council now has a duplicate of the contour map that's on the board or not? It is a duplicate contour map. The same map that's on the board, except it's marked up by you and others. I might state that the map that Mr. Peckinpah has handed to me is a map that was originally mine before it was appropriated either by Mr. Peckinpah or by Mr. Fryer. It has in the left. We thank Mr. Hayhurst for the use of it. Can we refer to it as an exhibit then in the record? We, we have, have no objection to it. For the purpose of illustration only, may it merely for identification, illustration only. All right, we can agree it's a duplicate contour, same scale, same figures as on the board. Well, we can agree that the printed portion of the map is identical with the printed portion of the map on the board. Well, that isn't quite right. There are certain changes, for example, on the plaintiff's exhibit one, the house is referred to as Crossland, or on the map that has been handed to me by Mr. Peckinpah, the same house is referred to as Dunkel. But I think that other than those minor changes. Also, the township is wrong. I guess the range is wrong. What is it, 24? 24 is indicated by each corner. The only thing I am concerned with, is the map a sufficient duplicate contour-wise and scale-wise so when the witness attempts to put on his division marks that I can have a comparison on the exhibits on the board? I think I can clarify that in the examination if we could have it marked. And I think for clarity, we should mark this as defendant's exhibit. A for identification. We have so many marks on that. If we can get another copy, we can just put one thing on it and substitute it later on. I am going to suggest that what we do is to have Mr. Erickson come to the map and we will use a blue pencil and the other markings can be ignored. Mr. Erickson, I show you the map that Mr. Peckinpah has handed me, marked as Defendant's Exhibit A for identification, as you have stated. I believe that you have previously examined this map and have made a physical partition in line with the question I asked you. That's right. And could you generally point out in what way you think the property could be divided? Well, I think the property could be divided along this bench, this rock bench, from here on up to the spring known as the Dunkel Spring or Crossland Spring. 
and then it could extend westward to a point sufficiently large enough to take in a third or a fifth of the territory. To shorten time, are you referring that one parcel would be roughly in this shape? That's right. In other words, if I can mark that, it would be at a point which I will mark, begin at a point that I will mark E8 on the south boundary of the quarter section. That's right. Go north to a point which I will mark on here as being E9, then run west or westerly to a point that I will mark on the map as E10, then south to a point on the map that I will mark E11, and then west on the map to a point that I will mark E12, then south to a point that I will mark as E13, and then east along the southern boundary of the property to E8. That's right. That would be, you think, one of the parcels? I do. And in your opinion, is that parcel the parcel with a one-fifth value or a three-fifth value? That's a one-fifth value. In making your boundaries run in these lines and directions, for example, from E8 to E9, you mentioned it running along the rocky ledge. Did I gather from that that you meant this line should go directly between points E8 and E9, or that there should be a line run between these points which would more closely follow the ledge itself? Not necessarily, just simplicity of getting a description of the property. I thought it would be easier to run it right straight. So that when you mention these lines, you are speaking of straight lines? That's right. Now that, or what would be another parcel that would indicate what you think would be in value one-fifth of the property, considering all the factors we've mentioned? Well, that would have to extend down around this Humphreys home and then continue on north. All right, in other words, you have drawn a blue line beginning at the point E9. Yes. And shall I draw the line just following this line? That's right. So that would start at E9 and follow around to a point I will call at its most easterly point, E10, then go to the northwest to an area called, I will mark it, E11. And then from E11, where would it go? Out here to this point. In other words, it would then go from E11 north to E12. That's right. And from E12, where would it go? To this point here which I will mark as E13. In other words, the line would run west from E12 to E13. That's right. And from E13, where would the line run? To this point here. Which would be E14, is that correct? That's correct. And from E14, where would it run? To the west line. Of the quarter section? Yes. Which would be marked here as E15? That's right. And from E15? To E12 it would run south to E12 and then run with the common boundary to E11 and then run north between E11 and E10 and then east from E10 to E9? Yes. I don't quite follow the easterly boundary of that portion there. I am going to suggest that perhaps it might be of help to put all of these boundaries in blue, Your Honor. I think it would show up. Where's the northerly terminus of the line? It would run between E11 and E12. Yes. Mr. Fryer has just called your attention, Mr. Erickson, to the fact that the line between E9 and E10 should be moved slightly north. That's right. How far on this map? To take in, just barely take in this spring here, I think, indicated on this broken line. There were two broken lines. I used the heavy one instead of the light one. Yes. And at this point between E10 and E9, you think that the line should be moved north? That's right. Just far enough to include within the parcel <laughs> to the south, the point that's marked as the Dunkel Spring? That's right. This area could very vary here a few feet to make. To take in the right amount of land, it would have to be probably adjusted, either one of these. I couldn't tell exactly, but approximate division. Now, you are indicating the uh, each one contains approximately 32 acres. In other words, you have divided these areas so that these two parcels that you have defined have roughly 32 acres. That's right. And the third parcel, which would be left, in your opinion, would have a value of roughly 60 percent? 96 acres. 96 acres. Now, in making a physical division, what other factors have you taken into consideration? 
Well, I've taken into consideration that this lies at a different bench. It lies at a different height, this property here. And this, this is above probably 60 or 80 feet higher than this one and also takes in, it gives them a portion of the portion across the hill. Now, this is on... You are referring to the area? This is the west side of the hill. From here, it runs to the west to the mountain. Could we designate these parcels by a number so we can refer to them? Better make it a name, X, Y, and Z. Referring to the first parcel described by you, I presume, in your division, that you assume that would be the parcel given to Mr. Crossland. That's right. So we can mark that on that as Crossland, and the second parcel described by you, I assume, is the one you would give to Mr. Humphreys? Yes. Mark that as Humphreys, and then the balance would be yours. Restate your question, counsel. I will withdraw my question, Your Honor. The question is, what factors did you take into consideration other than acreage in allocating or making division than the bench elevation? Did you take any factors into consideration in making this division other than the division of land into parcels, which would be equivalent in area? Well, yes, to compensate possibly for the water or springs, there is the timber all located on this section here and practically no timber on any other portions. Where is the timber located? The timber is all located relatively right across this way. In other words, the timber would be located, as I understand it, in an area running from the point that you have indicated on here as being in the area of Humphreys Spring. That's right. And it runs, as I gather, into the southwest. It takes in the entire area here, clear on up. By the entire area. Is the area that we have marked as Humphreys, is that entirely wooded? It's practically all wooded. And how dense is that timber? Well, it's fairly dense. Well... Let me interrupt. The witness is using the term timber, and in ordinary sense, it's usually referred to as merchantable lumber for purposes of merchantable saleable lumber. Now the court was under the impression in viewing this property that whether there was timber in that sense of the word, if so, whether it was a type that could be cut under any government permit and whether it would be accessible, and if so, whether it would ruin the value of the property as cabin sites, whether it would interfere with the spring flow and that sort of thing. I didn't anticipate it, but I will go into that. When you speak of timber, Mr. Erickson, what kind? Those are yellow pine, sugar pine, and fir. And have you measured it to determine the number of feet in that area? I haven't, but there. You personally have made no computation? I haven't. I'm not able to. Now, referring strictly to the Humphreys property, when you speak of timber, I am going to speak of them now as trees. What size trees will those be as a whole? Well, I couldn't say. Well, referring to the Crossland property, what size trees? I couldn't say. All right, we'll stop. I was getting hairy. Yeah, well, it doesn't get any better. <laughs>